You are the best you the world will see. Come along now and share you with me. Let's learn something new and share feelings too. Cause these are the things to do to be the best you. this fine day. Hello, Auntie Lena. I'm feeling great. Oh, but, well, I have a question for you, and, and I hope it's not too silly. Well, Possum, even if it is silly, you know you can ask me anything. So what's your question? Well, do you ever need quiet time? Well, Possum, I don't think that's a silly question. Why are you asking? Yesterday, Turtle and I were playing tag and having a lot of fun when Turtle's sister shushed us. She said we were making too much noise and, and she needed peace and quiet to do her homework. Oh, I see. You interrupted her quiet time. Mm -hmm. She wasn't very happy about it. Well, to answer your question, yes, there are times when I like to be alone to enjoy quiet time. Quiet time helps me to calm down. I like to read a book, listen to music, or take a nap. Oh, really? But well, being alone doesn't sound as fun as, as playing with my friends. Oh, I don't know about that, Possum. Learning how to enjoy quiet time can be as good for you as playtime. How is quiet good for me? Well, you tell me, Possum. Think about a time when you were quiet. What were you able to accomplish when it was quiet? Hmm. Oh, I know. Well, at bedtime, I like it to be quiet so I can sleep. Um, or, or, oh, or when I'm working on a puzzle, well, I like it quiet so I can find the right pieces. That's a lot harder to do with so much noise. Those are great examples of when the quiet time is important. When it's quiet, you can really pay attention to what you are doing and not get distracted. Like when I turn off the TV so, so Mama Possum can read a story to me? Yes, and that reminds me. I know a story about quiet time, and it's called Iwalani's Tree by Constance Hale. In the story, Iwalani has a very special place where she likes to go for her quiet time. Let's listen with our friends. Hello, friends. My name is Mahina Oshi. I'm a librarian at the Seattle Public Library, and I'm here with my son, Maxwell. We are at the Woodland Park Zoo, one of our very favorite places. Do you want to read a story with me today, Maxwell? Yeah. Oh, good. This story is called Eva Lenny's Tree. Do you know what I like most about this story? No. There are words in Hawaiian in this story. <sighs> what do you think about that? Cool. Oh, it's cool. The reason why I think that is so cool is Maxwell and I are part Kanaka Maoli. We are part Native Hawaiian and it's so exciting to see a book with words from our culture in it. This book is called Eva Lenny's Tree and it's written by Constance Hale and it's illustrated by Kathleen Peterson. Let's read it. I like to lean on a low branch of a tree that stands way, way down the beach toward Kaena, just on the spot where the land becomes the sand. Some people call it a paina. Some call it an ironwood. It has fuzzy brown bark, a strong trunk, and good and long willowy needles that whisper in the wind. Sometimes when a light breeze, he makani ahe ahe, tickles her needles. Do you see the needles on the page? Oh, yes. Down the jailer. Everywhere, like, the tree whispers soft sounds like those you hear when you hold a shell to your ear. Sounds of the sea and the sand and the waves and the wind. Wash, pa, whoosh, ah. And sometimes when a brisk wind, Hemakani Malua, makes her branches bend and bellow 
the tree yowls scary sounds like those you hear in a deep, dark rainforest. Sounds of the mongoose and the pu'el. What's a pu'el? Owl. Owl, yes, good job. Of hawks and pu'a'a. Grr, nickel, umbrr. I like to walk toward Ka'ena, to the tree's spot, when the house is too hot, or my brother is bothering me, or the neighbors are making much too much noise. Oh, where is she sitting? On uh, a tree. Under her tree. My tree never says things that people say, like don't sit there like a bump on a log, or eh, you going moi moi, moi moi is to sleep, or stop daydreaming. She likes it when I sit and dream, and sometimes she does say things to me, but only when the wind blows. What sound does the wind make? Pa, wa, sh, pa, whoosh, ah, and grr, nickel, umber. Good job, I like the sounds you make. You sound like the wind. The tree's branches bend and lean over the beach. Her shadow makes a pool of cool, and her fallen needles float out like Mr. Tanaka's great green net. I sit in the shade and fish for my favorite treasures. Do you see what her treasures are? Yeah. <gasps> Crunchy Good pine cones, yes. Blue beach glass skeletons of sea urchins, and shells of every shape. One day I asked the tree what she does there all day and night on her spot where the land becomes sand. The wind blows and I hear her say, well, well, why I dream, I dream I have legs to run down the beach and arms to reach for the sea. Isn't that silly? Who ever heard of a tree with arms and legs? But could it be? One night, when I am home and in my bed, a big storm comes in from the sea. Huge white waves smash onto the sand. A howling wind tears the leaves off trees. Lightning cracks the sky open like a coconut. In the morning, I see the storm sent palm fronds crashing to the ground. And look, stole the tin roof off Mrs. Da Silva's chicken coop. Oh no. <laughs> Did the storm also take my tree and carry her off to sea? I race way, way down the beach toward Ka'ena. <gasps> my tree still stands just on the spot where the land becomes sand. Do you see the tree standing there? Oh my goodness, but something has changed. The waves have pulled away so much sand that the tree's roots are free and bending over the beach with giant knees and feet. The wind has pulled off so many needles that the branches are free and stretching toward the sea with giant elbows and fingers. The, the, the arms, can see? Oh, yes. The, the, the a leg and a foot? A tree really can have legs to run down the beach and arms to reach for the sea. With each storm that comes, the tree loses more needles and her roots become more free. Now, when a big wind blows, he makani malua, her whispers grow so low, they almost disappear. Oh, look at her. What is she doing? Sitting on the knees. Oh, she's sitting on the knees? Yes, I sit on her knees and dream and dream. Together we whisper. Wa, shh, pa, whoosh, ah, grr, nickel, umber. The end. What did you think about that book, Maxwell? That's good. It was really good. I love that story. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. Bye. Wash, pa, whoosh. <laughs> Possum, it sounds like you really enjoyed the story. Mm -hmm. I did, Auntie Lena. Uh, Iwalani did a lot in her quiet time. 
She sat in the shade, collected blue beach glass, and daydreamed. I like that she was able to get away when her brother was bothering her or when there was too much noise. I also like being alone when I'm feeling mad or overwhelmed. Oh, really? Yes, it's good for me to be alone, to calm down and remember to take a deep breath. Do you remember how to deep breathe, Possum? Yes, I do. I take a deep breath in. One, two, three, and out. One, two, three. Very good, Possum. I'm glad that you remembered. Auntie Lena, can friends have quiet time together? They sure can. Just like you and Mama Possum have quiet time when she reads to you. Oh, right. And what other things can friends do together during quiet time? One of my favorite things to do alone or with a friend is art. Oh, like what? Why don't we look, listen, and learn with Miss Erin and our friends? I know she has a fun art project for us. Hello friends, my name is Miss Erin and I'm an artist on Duwamish land in Seattle, Washington. Today we're in the Chinatown International District neighborhood at the Wing Luke Museum of the Asian Pacific American Experience, or the Wing Luke Museum for short. I feel really safe and at home here, so I decided to do some quiet time here today. Do you know what quiet time is? Quiet time is when we can rest our bodies and minds. It's important for us to be able to relax, focus, and prepare for other parts of our day. For my quiet time, I like to doodle. Doodling is when you just draw what comes to your imagination. For your doodling session, all you need is a piece of paper, any kind, uh, some colored pencils, pens, or paints, and a comfortable place to sit. And then you just start. I'm gonna focus on some things that make me happy. I'll draw some, maybe I'll draw some characters that I like to draw. It's just a little rabbit creature. Even if you don't want to draw something specific, you can just draw shapes and lines. How does that make you feel just to explore colors on the page and not be worried about how perfect something is? Well, now that I have some lines on my paper, I think I'll just go ahead and color them in and give some different weight to my doodles. Yeah, I kind of just get into my groove. I feel my mind getting a little bit relaxed. Keep adding, adding things that feel right. So this rabbit is gonna go on a little picnic here. So here is her. Basket. And maybe this rabbit needs a friend, probably, yeah. Oh, see, I drew, I drew my little bird over the rabbit, and that's okay. Just part of the drawing. Again, it's just a drawing for me. So it definitely doesn't have to be a masterpiece just has to make me feel pleased. I think I'm just gonna practice doing some of my numbers and letters because I just really like to, to work on those. What are you drawing there in your doodle session? Maybe I'll draw my name on here. And I think I feel pretty good about that. This is what it looks like. I hope you enjoyed our quiet time at the Wing Luke Museum, and I hope you remember to take care of each other. Bye. 
Wow, I like that doodling. It reminds me of coloring. Oh, you color too, Auntie Lena? I sure do. Coloring is a great quiet time activity. I find it very relaxing, and I like seeing how the different colors work together. Oh, me too. I really like the color yellow. It makes me feel happy and calm. I like that description of yellow, Possum. Do you know what else makes me feel happy and calm? Oh, what? Singing! <sighs> but that's not quiet. You're right. It's the opposite. But singing and making music can be very soothing. And just like art, it's something that we can do by ourselves or with our friends. Ooh, can we make music with our friends now, Auntie Lena? That's a great idea. Let's listen to what they're playing. Hi, everybody at home. My name is Mr. Chris, and today we're here at the Tequila Community Center. And uh, today we're gonna to be talking about quiet time and music. But before we go there, I wanna introduce a friend that I'm here with today. Hi, my name is Raina. Yeah, so we're really excited to be here with you. So uh, we're gonna talk about quiet time. We're gonna talk about how music can help us get into quiet time, especially when things are scary or when we're angry or when things are just wild going around us. So with quiet time, you know, a lot of people, they use music to put themselves in this, in this quiet state. I have a song that we're gonna to play today. It's called Ali Palau, and it was written by a good friend of mine named Sabu and his cousin Shino. And so they were going through a really scary time. They were actually in the middle of a typhoon watching a movie. And if you don't know what a typhoon is, it's a big storm. It's a big storm, lots of wind, lots of rain. And they were going through this typhoon in their home and the power went out. And the only thing they had was an ukulele and so to calm themselves down, they decided to write a song. So we're gonna sing that song today to help us calm down and get into a quiet space. I wanna teach you this song, Reina. Okay, I wanna show, okay. I wanna uh, teach you some of the words because it's in a different language. Parts of it are, it's in the language called Palawan, right? So the first word we're gonna learn is Ali. Ali means hello. Mm -hmm. Can you say that? Ali. Ali means hello, very good. The, the next words that we're gonna learn are Ungil Tutau. That means good morning. Ungil Tutau. Yeah, Ungil. Tutau. Unil tutau. Yeah, that means good morning. Mm -hmm. All right, so those are two words we'll learn, okay? You wanna try you wanna try to play along with me? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna start playing and you just play what you feel, okay? Okay. There you go. Good. I'm already feeling calm right now. Here come the words. Ali Palau from the islands of Palau. Ali Palau from the islands of Palau. Umil Tutahau. Good morning from Mama's house. Umil Tutahau. First we go to Amalik to see Mamang, our village queen. We go down to a taro patch, work so hard it breaks our back. Uncle climb up the tree to get the beetle nut for me. Take it down to Aki Market Street so we can sell and get money. Ali Morning from Mama's house. Ooh, and here we go. Here's another word. Sulong. Can you say Sulong? Sulong. What do you think Sulong means? Um, have a nice day. Have a nice day. It means goodbye. But yeah, have a nice day. So here we go. Sulong farewell.
Very nice, very nice. So why do you think music helps us to calm down? Um, what, because, what about it? What do you think it is? Um, because it's very calming and it's very harmony mm -hmm. and it's very uh, nice. Yeah, yeah. And it's very peaceful. It's very peaceful, right? Do you feel calmer after we played? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. So when you when you move on, you know, when you move forward in life, you know, when you have a moment where you're feeling angry or you're feeling like just really nervous about something, you know, throw on a song, you know, and <laughs> sing or and that'll help you calm down. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Raina. Thanks, Raina. Thanks for playing the song. Okay. Goodbye, friends. Bye. Wow, that was fun, Auntie Lena. I agree, Possum. I really liked all the different sounds. Mm, me too. But Auntie Lena, why would anyone want to play music like that alone? Well, having quiet time to play music alone can help you concentrate and be creative, especially when you're practicing or learning how to play a new instrument. Oh like when I was learning how to play the concertina. Exactly. Wow. I guess quiet time really can be as good as playtime. When I'm quiet, I can play music, do my homework, read, or, or make arts and crafts. Alone time, peace and quiet can help us to learn more about the things that we really like to do. And knowing what we like helps us to be what, Possum? To be the best you the world will ever see. That's right. Friends, thank you for taking time to look, listen, and learn with us today. And remember, you are the best you that the world will ever see. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Hi friends, my name is Coach Jamila and today we're working on our Movement Minute. And we're gonna do up dogs and down dogs. Let's go down to the ground and we're gonna have our hands right underneath our shoulders, toes on the ground and we'll start with the down dog, reaching your hips way up towards the sky. And then we're gonna come back down, hips down and look up towards the sky and push back reaching back heels pushing down to the ground and coming back up big stretch stick out your chest and push back again down dog and up dog and again down dog and up dog and rest bring those knees down Great job, guys. We'll see you next time. Stay tuned after the credits for Auntie Lena's parent tip. In today's episode, Auntie Lena and Possum explore quiet time. Possum learns that quiet time is a time to slow down, relax, and breathe. Ah, <sighs> Deep breaths, what a treat. As parents and caregivers, finding quiet time to catch your breath sometimes seems nearly impossible. So many demands, so much hurry up and go. Sometimes you're lucky to get one good breather in during those busy days. But God bless the ability to take a few deep breaths. They help us meet the demands that go with the 24-7, 365 day reality of caring for young children. And just like you, children need quiet time so that they can discover new parts of themselves, let their imaginations roam, dream, rest, and reset. For your child's sake, as well as your own, 
Create quiet times and build them into your daily routine so that both you and your child can be the best you that the world will ever see. Inhale and exhale.